Hello and welcome to this playlist. In this playlist, we will be talking about linear algebra and what and how the videos are going to go for linear algebra. So let's start off with the idea of what linear algebra is. Linear algebra is probably one of the most annoying parts of introductory mathematics and the first kind of real sort of mathematics that most undergrads in mathematics and engineering majors and any kind of people taking mathematics in general kind of get stumped at because it's your first kind of introduction to how real mathematics in general works. And this might keep the impression that linear algebra in general is hard, but it's it's not too hard. It just takes a bit of intuition to kind of get the right idea. So before we get into all of that, though, what exactly is linear algebra? Well, I kind of spoiled it just by writing it ahead of time here. But as you can see right here, linear algebra is essentially a study of, well, as you can imagine, linear equations and linear mappings and how to kind of transform from one map to another. That might seem a little bit confusing at first, but let's just kind of talk about like a very simple example. Suppose I have the equation y equals 4x plus 3. This is very easy to analyze. For example, you know, if I were to plot this, that would look something like that. Pretty straightforward. I mean, this is a this has a nice slope. That's nice properties. It's continuous. There's no bends. It's pretty straight. The slope is easy to kind of find, and it's just easy to generally analyze. And then we have other equations. For example, if you have y equals x squared plus three x plus three, this is still not too bad. We can plot this, of course, and we get a parabola of some kind. But the problem is that. Generally, nonlinear equations, especially in higher level math, when we talk about nonlinear differential equations and many other kind of fields, are generally very hard to analyze. So, if there was a way to analyze them using a linear equation, that's very nice. And it turns out there is. We can use something called a linear transformation to convert complicated looking equations into more simpler looking equations. And that's essentially what linear algebra is. We're analyzing linear equations and the solutions to these linear equations from more complicated looking equations using something called a linear transformation or a linear mapping. This might seem a bit ambiguous at first, but I promise it will make sense. Now, the idea is that why is this, you know, useful? Like, who cares? Like, well, I talked about why this is useful. It lets us, so in a nutshell, it lets us analyze complicated looking equations in a much more easier way using something called a linear transformation by mapping different coordinates of that point of that equation into easier points. So what do I mean by that? For example, if I have a parabola of some kind, we can map each of these points by a linear transmission into a line instead and analyze those new points instead. This will all make sense once we talk about much more deeper topics in, in linear algebra, but for now, in a nutshell, basically it lets us analyze complicated looking equations using simpler equations by transforming them using something called a linear transformation. Now, why is this, you know, useful. Why do we care about linear algebra? I mean, this sounds very abstract. Well, there's a lot of reasons we care, actually. It's used in it's used in machine learning, it's used in image processing, it's used in differential equations, circuit theory, signal processing, and there are so many more applications. It's I can't even list all of them. It's just, just far too many. For example, in image processing, we can take an we can take, you know, a, a picture convert each of the pixels in the image into bits of data and then analyze a neighborhood of this uh, region and use linear algebra to figure out, okay, how can I manipulate the pixels in that area? I mean, a lot of, if you're familiar with Photoshop, a lot of, a lot of applications in Photoshop use linear algebra to do many kinds of applications, such as blurring, cropping, rotations. Rotations are actually used in linear algebra all the time. Cropping is also done by deleting parts of a, a picture using linear algebra. Same with blurring and many other applications. So... Image processing is a very powerful field. Machine learning is a very powerful field. Differential equations is a very powerful field. 
I have not talked about differential equations yet, but the idea is that certain equations involving derivatives of functions are known as differential equations. The solution to a differential equation can be done very nicely and compactly using linear algebra. So it's considerably easier to use linear algebra in many, many cases. It's also used in circuit theory a lot because it turns out that if you draw a circuit of some kind, so let's say we have a resistor right here. Let's say we have a very simple circuit with some kind of source. It turns out that when you have a system, when you have multiple kind of, well, let's just make this a bit more complicated, I suppose. Sure, we can, we can go with that. Okay, just ignore the poorly drawn circuit. But the idea is that if I have some kind of a source and I have, if I solve the current going through each of these kind of paths, it turns out that linear algebra can be used to kind of model the solution to the circuit equation. So I can use it to solve for the current and voltage going through a particular set of uh, resist, uh, points in a circuit. So that's another, but that's another time where uh, linear algebra is very useful. Signal processing is also very useful. And I use these examples in particular because I did my degree in electrical engineering. So I'm mostly familiar with applications in electrical engineering rather than other fields. But linear algebra, the use of linear algebra are quite vast in general. It's, uh, it's hard to kind of underestimate its uses. It's used in signal processing using something called a signal space and how transmission theory works when you're projecting a signal into a particular direction. So linear algebra has a lot of a lot of uses. You can use it in many, many fields. Now, how is this kind of playlist gonna work? Well, it's gonna have about 83 videos. It could be a little bit higher or lower, but it's gonna be around that length. We start with the idea of linear motion. So how what does it mean to have motion along a line and how to describe that vectorially? Then we talk about the idea of a norm or a magnitude, length and then direction. And you'll see these aren't very obvious concepts. These are actually a much more well-defined than you think they are or what you might be used to. So that's one thing. Then we talk about, when we then we talk, touch about the notion of a complex number. So for example, you know the square root of any real number is equal to, well, you know, the square root of four is equal to two, for example. But what happens when you have the square root of a negative number? Well, before we just kind of disregarded this value because we were only working with the real numbers before, but it turns out that this is actually possible to define and actually do mathematics with. And complex numbers have many, many applications in many different kinds of fields. So this does come into play later on. Okay, next we talk about the idea of projections, which I briefly talked about just a moment ago in signal processing, and the idea that um, projections can be used to kind of describe how one kind of vector, so to, for the lack of a better word, looks, for, uh, for, a, for a very simple kind of explanation, what I'm essentially doing is taking a vector and then projecting it or transforming it to another vector and analyzing how this new vector looks under this transformation, which is, this is, which is a very dumbed down version of what we're gonna be doing a bit later on. But projections are infinitely useful in linear algebra. It's just a sense of, we, we gotta wait until we don't get there. Then we talk about the idea of a matrix and how to do matrix algebra. So a matrix is essentially just a bunch of data is set in an array, more or less. But we'll talk about how to kind of talk about do matrix algebra and properties of matrix algebra a bit later. So that's the next topic. Then we talk about the idea of determinants and oriented volume, which I, I can't even name, I can't even tell you how many examples to, uh, and applications there are for determinants. Basically, this kind of represents the idea of volume and how you orient them in multiple spaces. So suppose I kind of have a cube of some kind. How does it look like when I flip it around? Does it look something like this now? And so on. So determinants and volume are very, very closely related. It's just something we'll look at a bit later. Then we look at the idea of vector spaces. Vector spaces are essentially saying, okay, I have some things called vectors. And you might be thinking, oh, vector is just a uh, something that has a, 
a magnitude and direction that you might have learned in high school, for example. But that's not necessarily the case. Vectors are actually a lot more well-defined than you think they are. It turns out that in many cases, in different, different depending on kind of the space you work with, you can actually define the zero vector to be the number one. That might seem a little bit absurd at first, but you'll see very quickly that this kind of logic and thinking can really change the way you see mathematics in general. Then we talk about the idea of linear transformations, which is essentially the cornerstone of linear algebra and probably one of the most important things about how linear algebra works in general. And finally, we talk about eigenvectors and eigenvalues, which are essentially, I would probably argue, the second most important part of linear algebra, right after linear transformations. Uh, this essentially, to, as a, in a very, very watered down version of what this is, this essentially talks about scaling and how to work with large uh, amounts of data, so to speak. That might seem, and that might seem a little bit vague at first, but you'll see the idea of why this is important. This, the notion of scaling becomes very important when you get to the later parts of linear algebra. And finally, we talk about some some applications of linear algebra, such as solving differential equations, optimization, and a few other important parts of linear algebra. Okay, and that pretty much covers the course. As I mentioned, there'll be about each three videos. It could be a little bit long, more or less. And, and I am very excited to kind of start this topic. I mean, this is being something I'm being very passionate to kind of start teaching and I really hope I can help you achieve your goals and if you have any questions about anything about the course please feel free to comment about uh, anything in the this in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer but with that let's start with the first topic which will be about learning motion see you then and if you, and if you find this video interesting please remember to like comment share and subscribe see you around